Amplify Motion, the leading solution for high-quality and fast-performing motion blur on Unity, offers two types of motion blur, object blur and camera blur. It's not immediately apparent that a distinction is being made between the two, but with a few simple guidelines, users can make the most out of Amplify Motion. Camera blur, as the name hints, is the blur effect generated by your camera movement and probably the most familiar kind of motion blur seen in real-time applications. It's a great effect, but by itself your application would be unable to properly display any motion blur generated by the object movement when the camera is still. To overcome this limitation, so to speak, Amplify Motion uses a lightweight object script that gathers the additional required information based on your dynamic object movement and type. It currently supports any type of solid surface, skin mesh, cloth or most particle systems. If you look closely, you will notice that the Auto Register option is enabled by default. When toggled, Amplify Motion will automatically add the script to your dynamic objects. Objects set to static will automatically be ignored, as they do not contribute to object blur. The use of the Auto Register Object option is not obligatory, and we strongly recommend manually adding the script to your assets whenever necessary. The Auto Register process will ignore any assets that already contain the object script. The component will not be added twice. Let's look at some specific cases. For example, when instantiating large amounts of dynamic assets, for performance reasons we recommend adding the object script to your prefab manually or via code. More so when instantiating large amounts of physics-based objects. In any case, the Auto Register process is quite capable and should be able to handle most projects. Nonetheless, the additional control is available if needed. Adding blur to cloth objects works as with any other dynamic object, be it with individual assets or combined with others such as characters. Skin meshes such as characters or any other type of complex assets work great. Users should simply make sure that the Amplify Motion object script is added to the root of the asset. If you look closely, you will notice that when toggled, the object script will automatically add children objects of the same hierarchy. As seen in this video, incorrectly set up skin models will result in noticeable visual artifacts, easily corrected by adding the object script to the root of the asset. Last but not least, the culling mask allows users to define which objects will display the motion blur effect. By default, the Amplify Motion component will include all available layers in the culling mask list. As with other Unity masks, users can choose which layers to use. Using this model as an example, we simply create a new layer called No Blur, add the dynamic object to it, remove the No Blur layer from the Cull Mask list, and that's it, the object now has No Blur effect applied. Do note that just as any other dynamic object, the Amplify Motion object script needs to be added to the asset stack. As we demonstrated, most dynamic assets require the Amplify Motion object script in order to properly represent the motion blur effect. However, for performance reasons, it's completely acceptable to not add the object script to assets with slow or practically non-existing motion such as grass or trees. Camera blur is still applied and should suffice for most cases. This concludes part 2 of the Amplify Motion tutorial series. We hope you enjoyed this video and join us next time where we will cover overlay cameras on complex setups and particle systems. If you have not already, check out our other Unity products. We offer fully functional trial versions. Try them today.